Hello fellow old schoolers. Let's get right back into the saddle here with some more matches from the Eel Castle Cup. And as usual with this line of games here, I'm, I'm sorry I don't have any deck pictures, but um, we'll try to go over the general concepts of the decks here. Uh, this tournament was held a while back, so that's the reason why I don't have uh, the pictures in, on hand. Anyway, the first deck we're going to meet here is the Card Denier deck. It's actually an archetype uh, that came later on, I mean after the old school era. At least, uh, I suppose Fallen Empires could start it out, but um, you sh it, it, it was around Ice Age that this deck really came into uh, existence uh, in my experience. Um, it general, it generally, it's primarily black, but splashes all the colors. Uh, except green, and it uses uh, a lot of uh, card denial and card advantage uh, to itself. Uh, usually, that would be uh, le well later on. It would be like him to Torak, or uh, Stupor, Abysmal Spectres, stuff like that from Ice Age, um, and you would use uh, Necropotence uh, in order to gain card advantage yourself. Uh, this guy has tried to recreate this deck in old school, it seems. So he's using Disrupting Scepters and Hypnotic Spectres, and obviously Mind Twist, to discard cards from the opponent's hand. He doesn't have access to Hymptotoric like uh, they do in America, but uh, because this is Swedish old school, so he's um, a bit stumped right there. Uh, and then he uses Greed and a Yaimde Tombs to get card advantage of his own. So uh, primarily he'll try to poke in with little creatures like uh, Black Knights and uh, Hypnotic Spectres, maybe Sushis, Singer Vampires, and um, yeah, try to hit the other guy's hand with uh, his uh, disruption, making him discard cards, and then draw cards of his own with Greed and Yime Blade Tomb, and winning through with the card advantages through that, just focusing heavily on that card draw disparity. Um, his opponent is a combo deck here. It is the power monolith art type, primarily blue and red, but sometimes it splashes other colors. Um, this is all about getting uh, a combo for infinite mana as quickly as possible. And the combo revolves around a uh, basalt monolith in combination with power artifact, hence the name, power monolith. And uh, once you have that, it will cause less mana to untap the monolith than, it costs, uh, than the mana you gain from tapping it. So in essence, you can just tap and untap it an infinite amount of times, getting infinite mana, and then you'll just fireball the other guy for um, a billion damage, uh, or maybe brain geyser him for his entire deck. You'll use Demonic Tutor, and you'll use uh, Transmute Artifacts as tutors to get these things out. So usually you would likely uh, transmute like a Mox later on into a Basset Monolith, uh, play the power artifact and uh, yeah, just go to town. Actually, uh, the main thing here is to survive the early game and uh, try to uh, withstand the opening pressure of the other guy. You can use counter spells for that, maybe lightning bolts, and uh, yeah, the abyss will be uh, stables in this arch type. But in general, it's all about uh, getting that combo, so it doesn't really matter how much life the opponent has, it doesn't matter, make sense to attack him or anything, you'll just wait, trying to survive, and once you get the combo, you'll just blow him out of the skies. That is the general idea of this deck. Usually combo actually has a bit of trouble against card denial, because you need a lot of cards in hand uh, to get the combo up, so uh, I would put a card denier as a slight favorite or maybe as a, as a big favorite in this matchup but I do think that uh, the card denier deck is unpowered uh, or at least it has very little power whereas the combo deck is fully powered so that might tip the balance back into a 50-50 lineup. We shall see. It, it, it's definitely the case that uh, back in the day card denier would be really brutal against combo decks and control decks. In any event, this is the matchup for today. Karthenaya coming up against uh, Power Monolith. Let's get it on. And it's round one. We have a roll off here. Karthenaya on the left and Power Monolith on the right. We shall see who's on the play. And these. Uh, Playmats are here because of the theme of this tournament, but this is the Eel Castle Cup, and this is the call sign for players in that uh, playgroup and that event. Okay, uh, Power Monolith re -mulli uh, takes a mulligan here. Didn't like his opening hand. Let's see if it, this does any better. Mm. 
Okay, just cuts a fireball here, keeps the hand. What? He has he has no land. There's a black knight. What in the What the heck? Why did he keep that hand? Now he discards his power sink. What on earth? Getting hit by a black knight here. Should not expect for he scoops the game. That was weird. <laughs> he shouldn't keep a hand with zero cards in hand. Maybe he had an assisted recall and some I saw he had a filver stone, so likely he Really just hope that he would draw into some mana, but talk about a high risk. Uh, he must have had a great hand to make this work, uh, or to tr think that he could make this work. Anyway, just um, at the moment the Hypnotic Spectre hit the table, he just uh, forfeits the game because he knows he'll lose so many cards here that uh, it's a done deal. That's a lot of uh, sideboard options. I was just about to say that Cardinal had no idea what he's against here and can't really sideboard because he hasn't seen a single card. But apparently he does. Maybe these guys know each other. Or he has some intel that what he's against because he sideboards a bunch of cards here. So what will he sideboard? If he knows it's a it's a power power artifact, a uh, power monolith deck, he will likely take in some red blasts uh, and blue blasts, maybe, maybe some artifact removal. The other guy does he know? He, he knows he's against something. It, will, it could be dead guy ale. It could be something. He saw scrubland as and. Underground Sea, and he saw Hypnotic Spectre on the Black Knight, so he should likely get some more creature remo removal. Uh, really, to handle the Spectres. The Spectres are the most important things for him to get rid of because uh, um, losing cards as, it, uh, as a combo deck in the early game will make it that much harder to set the combo up. Right, so thinking this through and we'll cut a bit forward and go straight into match number two. So at least Power Monolith is on the play here. He sh should keep some lands in hand here. He can't be so unlucky twice. Yeah, okay, Mana Vault coming out here. Underground C. Okay, it's double blue mana, so now I can counter. Oh, just in Sistling, yes. Yeah, he could have waited with that until the other guy's end step, I think. Kept the counter magic up. Needs to block any Hypnotic Spectres here. You can actually play one here. I think you should. No, okay, Divine Offering instead. On the Mana Vault, okay. Didn't it, I think playing a Hypnotic Spectre would have been. The superior choice. Okay, the other guy has a volcanic guy and likely a lightning bolt to handle it as well. That's a spectra. No sushi. Okay, there's the power sink. Oh, he could power sink um, with the mana bolt before that, so he wasn't completely defenseless. Disrupting steps are coming down here. Oh, the other guy doesn't allow it. Power sinking it. Okay, that's all. A bunch of power magic. Oh, oh he takes it back. Oh, because he was power synced, obviously. He couldn't play the key as well because he, he had to tap all his mana. Now playing a sushi. Do we have more? Okay, that's okay, he, he waits for the chaos of then mana drains that. That gives two colors mana to power monolith. I wonder what he'll Okay, using that to fireball. Fueling the fireball for four on that uh, sushi. Okay, factory gets in for a poke. First blood. But again, this is a much different match. I mean, Power Monolith is really establishing his mana presence here. And uh, foiling the other guy's attempts. Now Mantis in his hand. It's also Plowshare, Black Lotus. Not the most important cards here, but still. The other guy kept in his soft Plowshare, so perhaps he didn't know what he was against, or perhaps he uh, anticipated a sideboard transformation from the other guy. Sometimes these really skewed decks, like creatureless decks, combo decks, will. Uh, or the deck will actually sideboard 15 creatures in after sideboard. Uh, just to fool you. Transmute Artifact on the Filver Stone here. That's what I talked about in the in the deck tech. Yeah, getting out the power monolith. I wonder if he has the combo already. That's the power of this deck. It has so many tutors. Uh, for old school, at least. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's the power. Uh, that's a fireball. One billion damage coming into uh, Card Denier here. So, yep, yeah, you, you, can't, you can't give the Power Monolith too much uh, space here, or he'll go nuts. Um, this time, just uh, a Transmute Artifact 
into the key piece he was missing, and then everything clicked, and the combo set off. So it's third round here between these contestants. Katana on the play. Oh, straight into a time walk on the factory here. Plateau coming over with a factory. Turn two here, but actually turn one for the other guy. Okay, the other guy also has stuff to play. KS orb immediately. Another factory, a lot of pressure here. You can actually attack for four. Already? I think you will. Nope, there's a book. Okay, a bit of a more. I don't know if he has the time for that actually. I think I would have sideboarded that out. Okay, Chaos Orb on the bed, on the, the book. Taking for three. Taking with the factory and pumping it with the other factory. They're taking for four this time. Those factories mean business, man. Tutor. Other guy seems really mana starved as well. Only a single bad lanes. I wonder what he'll pick here. Library, mm, makes sense. It likely has a full new hand and he needs, but I mean, again, it's it's risky because it's not, it takes four damage a turn. So he needs to find an answer so quickly with that library. Oh, it's curtain call. Oh, he also might face sinkholes actually with this deck. Tutor. Yeah, I think, I think that's a tutor for a mind twist. The other guy doesn't have any blue cards and that would actually negate the library completely. So there's no need to tutor for a mind twist. You can get a two for one, just take his hand. You have so much mana. Unless the other guy draws a little island here so he can, so he can power sink. Did he get an island? No. Should probably use the library. Okay, Basset Monolith. Okay, getting two Basset Monoliths out. I think he, he knows what's going to hit him here. <laughs> Time to empty his hand. This would be a mind twist. Otherwise, I think it's a misplay. Yeah, that's a mind twist. Taking his hand. What? Okay. Wow, the other guy forfeits the game for that. I, I would never have done that. Um, but I suppose it's different with a combo deck, which when you misses your window like this, perhaps you're, it's just, there's no, no hope. Still, he could have drawn into a, a time twister or something. He did get a volcanic island in his next draw. I think there was a, perhaps a premature scoop. Really quick game, this one. Sometimes combo decks, I, I've tried that against Twitter Vaults as well. These combo players, they have likely played their, met, uh, their decks so much that they know when they miss their bin window, it, it, it just lights out. I remember a Twitter Vault player scooping in a tournament against me, turn one. <laughs> That's because I got Nando Dreams out. Uh, so, yeah, sometimes they do this. Um, yep, so a really quick game, this one. Cardenaia, the unpowered Cardenaia, took this one uh, two to one. The best of three. Uh, yeah, since it was so short, we'll uh, make another video and uh, try to put that up uh, ASAP. I hope you enjoyed this none nonetheless. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.